Today I'm going to be doing an overview of the Bell Voice 230. And before I get any further, that the computer is right there with on the uh, on this shelf. That part of the key does not work, so I don't even think about it because part of it got ripped off. And, and I am not taking the computer off of the shelf because there's another one that, above it, and you could be thinking, oh. Uh, oh, but still the liquid, you could just unplug that computer and stuff. Well, the other thing is that I'm trying to keep it plugged in because um, it doesn't, because it's the Gateway E2000, it doesn't have, it's CMOS battery is dead, and I've said that in multiple videos that it's been featured in, but yeah. So today we're going to be doing an overview of the Delphos Charger 230. So, a bit of background on this system. This system was the second computer that, or the second older computer that I, that I ended up getting, and it was $15. <coughs> Not including shipping. And it is actually a really decent unit for $15. Actually, shipping. I just want to throw that in there, and then I usually like to stay on a budget when you know, with a lot of the computers that I get on this channel. This machine is rather is responsible for two of my most popular videos as of the time that I'm recording this, which is March 28th, 2023, not including YouTube Shorts, but I don't do those anymore. And this computer also had a rather more successful acquisition video, although it wasn't as successful as the HP Capex 605 Pro acquisition video. But before I get into ports, I'll mention this computer does not have Windows Vista on it anymore, but it has Windows 7 on it, and it's activated even though it's not a genuine copy of Windows, which I think that's pretty decent knowledge that you're somehow able to activate a non-genuine copy of Windows 7. I mean, I'd still try and find a genuine copy of Windows 7, but nowadays that's rather hard to a legitimate genuine copy of Windows 7. It's hard to come by. Especially when you take into account the fact that usually time, most of the time, you're probably going to have to activate it over the phone. But anyway, in terms of ports, let me move this camera over here. Well, can't move it too far, but it's kind of hard to see. But there's a, uh, two USBs. And there's a DVD drive. And it seems that there are some audio jacks. And... Oh. And, yeah, that's on the front. If we go all the way over here, hopefully I can do this without knocking over my... Kind of hard to see. Let me just... Give me a second. Can't really move this around much because of the fact that it's on the charger. Because somebody forgot to unplug the iPhone cable from the, from the Apple Lightning cable from the, um, from the uh, USB cord that I use to charge my phone at night. Okay, let me just move this out of the way. There's a, there's a display port adapter, a non-working VGA, some PS2s, not PlayStation 2s, there's a serial port, four USB ports, a networking port, not sure whether or not it's RJ11 or RJ45 or either that, so I'm not going to even try and make the assumption. And some audio jacks along with some networking card spaces and a power supply thingy. And yeah, I do use a lot of the same power supplies for systems. I only have two power supplies, um, and apart from the Dell Inspiron 3252's power supply, which I forgot to mention, but that computer takes a different power supply that most of my other, that 
isn't accepted by all of these systems, but they all use like the same power cords, in case you are wondering. Which, I think it's a good thing that I'm able to use multiple power cords, uh, the same power cords on multiple systems without having any issues. The internals, I don't, I mean, we're not gonna get into the inside, we're not gonna open this thing up in this video because of the fact that I currently have this computer, which is the E2000 on top, and yeah, as I said earlier in this video, this computer has a dead CMOS battery. I don't want to open it, I don't want to take it off the wall because I have to unplug it, so yeah. And in case you're wondering how I'm going to be able to use the, and keep this one plugged in with the Vostro plugged in as well, is because I have the Think Center's power supply hooked into the HP Compact 6005 Pro right now, but that's going to be put into the Vostro. So yeah, let's, let's just, let me just get everything set up and not, not and, a, and not let the phone slip out of my hand, and then I'll get back to you. All right, now all I have to do now is just plug it in, and, and we should be all good to go. But before I do that, I just want to let you know that just like with the Windows 98 video or Windows 98 Prime 23, there is once again a lot of. I once again have the another a Minami Madobe wallpaper set on this thing. In fact, multiple ones in a slideshow. So you have been warned. So yeah, we'll boot into Windows 7. And yeah, in case you're wondering, all the entire Nanami Madobe theme is, was set by change the by set multiple wallpapers. So you can see it is starting windows. And yeah. Probably just gonna move this over a bit. See what I'm talking about. In a not in a second, but since this thing takes a bit of time to start up. And while I'm at it, I forgot to mention the specifications of this system. Great job, me. I'll probably just go into system information. And yeah, this is activated, even though it's not a genuine copy of Windows 7. I'll just give it up some time because it takes a bit of time to do stuff and get things going. And yeah, wallpapers, the wallpaper changes rather frequently. But you can see, oh no, you can't see. Assuming I can find the accessories folder and system tools. Let's go to system information here. And yeah, you can definitely tell that those are. And yeah, that sound is also part of the sound scheme that is enabled on the system. I, and in case you're warning, I turned off the closed program sound because that also, because it also is is used for a background process closing. That gets meaning that it gets rather annoying rather quickly. And yeah, I do like to use rather complicated computer names. A lot of these computer names are pretty much mixes of uppercase letters and uh, numbers that generated by chat GPT. So you can see that this is an Intel Core 2 Duo E8400 at 3 gigahertz. It has a, it has 4 gigabytes of RAM. If we go into computer here, assuming it will respond, Now 
this. Now it's probably gonna open up. I was right, it opened up. But you can see this has a 465 gigabyte hard drive. And a lot of this software is stuff that I put on here. This was originally a clean install of Windows 7. And yeah, a lot of these systems have clean installs of Windows. Because I don't have the original recovery media for these systems. I don't think we're able to find, but this thing also has a GPU in it. But if we can look here, I'm gonna give it some time to load. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that we're gonna give it some seconds. Windows is activated, although it is not a genuine, although it isn't a genuine version of Windows. If we go into the Windows Experience Index. Tell that this is a fairly decent benchmarking thingy, apart from the graphics, or even still, it is still a really decent system. Um, well, unfortunately, we can't find the information for the graphics card. This thing does have a graphics card, though. Although it might be somewhere in here again. There's some more information. We're going to components. This thing has an Intel GeForce 310 from the factory, which is pretty nice. You have a graphics card already put in the system. I have another system with a NVIDIA graphics card, which is the HP Pavilion A735W, which has a GeForce 5700 think, FX, if I remember correctly. I could go check, but not right now. But yeah, so we'll just shut down. Because there's nothing of note that we can do for testing. Because I don't have any games. And yeah. And I. Uh, anyway. So. Yeah. And with that. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you next week. Bye.